Thank you everyone so much for being here today. If you'd like, we have a few chairs available if you want to migrate towards this direction. Um, and at this time, I'd like to introduce Nick Keller, Airport Director. Good morning. Thank you for being here today on this historic day. Jaeger Airport's vision is to become the most important economic engine for the state of West Virginia through advances in aerospace and education. Today, we are going to help fulfill part of that vision by bringing the educational component to Jaeger Airport with the construction of Marshall University's Bill No Flight School. I'd like to turn it over now to Chairman of the Central West Virginia Regional Airport Authority, Jaeger Airport Board, Ed Hill. It's my honor to uh, welcome you here today on this very special occasion. Um, you know, this, I, I want to thank uh, <clears throat> the, the board members that are present with us, uh, members of our governing board that have made this possible. Would you wave your hand? I see Trip Shoemate and Jim Dodrell. Have any other board members here? Um, I, I want to thank our board. Our board has worked uh, diligently to, uh, uh, with, with Marshall University to make this happen. And uh, make no mistake, Jaeger Airport is an economic engine. And with the Marshall University School of Aviation, uh, this is the jet fuel for this economic engine. And we are so pleased to, to uh, have this. I, uh, I don't want to extend my, uh, my comments too long. Uh, we, uh, Nick is going to uh, introduce uh, our guests that we're fortunate to have with us. Um, uh, it so happens that I'm a pilot myself, among, among other things, and uh, I've been uh, flying for 40 years, hard to believe. But uh, I'm a graduate of the uh, Benny Mallory International School of Aviation. And uh, I, I know there are a few other uh, Malloryites uh, here today. But uh, this school is, uh, is taking aviation education to a, a higher level a higher altitude, if you will. So we are thrilled with this. And uh, with that, I'm going to turn it over to uh, Nick Keller uh, to introduce our guest. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman. I'd like to introduce President Jerry Gilbert of Marshall University. We first approached Marshall in 2018 and said, we would like for you to build a flight school at Jaeger Airport. There's a need for pilots. There's a need for mechanics. and they agreed with the need and agreed to partner with us, and that's why we're here today. President Gilbert. Thank you. Good morning. And what a great morning it is. I'm Jerry Gilbert, as he said, President of Marshall, and I could not be happier to be on this spot this morning as we prepare to break ground for the Bill No School of Aviation. It's truly a landmark day in the history of Marshall University where we are partnering with Jaeger Airport and expanding our presence in Charleston. Today, surrounded by many Marshall University friends, supporters, and partners, I would like to take a moment to publi publicly acknowledge some of them. First, let me thank Governor Jim Justice for his encouragement in this project. I also want to thank Senators Joe Manchin and Shelley Moore Capito, our congressional representatives, Carol Miller, Alex Mooney, the Kanawha County Commission with special recognition to Kent Carper, the board of directors at Marshall at uh, Jaeger Airport, and of course, Nick Keller, uh, the, Ye the Jaeger's executive director. I also want to acknowledge Charleston's mayor, Amy, Amy Goodwin, who is sitting beside me up here on the podium or this uh, row of chairs. Uh, additionally, we have our generous benefactors, the Mayor Foundation, which is represented by Brad Rowe. They gave us $1.5 million to assist uh, through a grant in the building of this classroom facility. Also, the AEP Foundation, which donated three quarters of a million dollars through a grant to purchase a flight simulator and help with the cost of the building and the furnishings. Chris Beam from AEP unfortunately was not able to join us today, but we are grateful for his support and we are grateful for the vision that both of these organizations had uh, for this project. They saw the transformative potential of this program and partnered with us to make this new facility and this new program possible. 
I'd also like to acknowledge our Marshall University Board of Governors for their support, including Sandra Thomas and our Chairman Patrick Farrell, uh, who are here today. There are also a number of other board members that deserve recognition. We have Tony Stroud, Donnie Holcomb, Angel Moore, and Kathy D'Antoni, who was not on the board at the time that we started this project. But Kathy helped create synergy for aviation education at the high school level and steered Jaeger to Marshall as its aviation partner for this flight school. And of course there's Bill No, our alumnus and board members whose lifetime of aviation experience will serve him well as he serves as our executive aviation specialist and the namesake for the Bill No Flight School at Marshall University. Bill could not be here with us today, but he deserves a huge debt of gratitude for helping us get this program going. We also have with us today Mr. Brian Branham, who just started uh, Monday, as a matter of fact, as our chief flight instructor, and we're glad to have him on board. And I also want to recognize uh, Marshall Vice President for Federal Relations, Charlotte Weber. Charlotte runs RCBI for Advanced Flexible Manufacturing. She had the great vision several years ago to apply for an EDA grant to promote the aerospace industry in southern West Virginia. That grant and the energy it created through RCBI Aero got this effort off the ground and flying. It was the spark that we needed to get this going. And we are grateful for her foresight and for her enthusiasm for the aerospace industry. Finally, I want to thank Dr. Jaime Taylor, Provost and Senior VP of Academic Affairs, and Dr. David Pittenger, our Dean of the Graduate School at Marshall and the Director of the Division of Aviation. They have both worked tire tirelessly to get this program airborne. Also a nod to our friends at the West Virginia Higher Education Policy Commission and the Regional Higher Learning Commission for their assistance in this process. We are excited to be at Jaeger Airport. We're also excited to be co-located with the West Virginia National Guard. Uh, we're excited that this sort of noise will be going on all the time up here as our planes fly in and out of this airport. There have been a lot of people involved along the way, and I know that I've probably not called out everyone's name here today, but I want to thank everyone for being here, uh, and I apologize if I've missed you. Uh, I want to give you a little background on how this exciting program got started. Close to two years ago, several partners, including Jaeger Airport, suggested to the university that the aviation industry was quickly becoming stressed in terms of the number of pilots available to fly commercial airliners. As an industry, the commercial pilot is the only profession with a federally mandated retirement age. Encouraged by Charlotte Weber and others, we decided to conduct a feasibility study, and we had intensive talks with industry leaders, also with the FAA and other flight schools around the country. It was after a thorough investigative and fact-finding process that Marshall committed to its own flight school to produce commercial pilots with a bachelor's degree. When we are fully up and running, we expect to enroll more than 200 students and produce some 50 commercial pilots annually. As you may know, thank you. As you may know, our South Charleston campus will serve uh, for traditional classroom instruction and the hands-on training will occur right here at Jaeger on this newly constructed facility. Additionally, Marshall planes will be parked here in a 12,000 square foot hangar. As a side note, we will be flying as our signature plane, the Cirrus SR-20, which is the state-of-the-art airplane in small planes. 
Our plains are going to be a beautiful sight to behold over the skies of Charleston and southern West Virginia. Certainly this is an exciting opportunity for the capital city, for Marshall, and for our students. I also want to note that Marshall is planning a two-year aviation maintenance degree program in partnership with Mount West Community and Technical College and supported by our Robert C. Byrd Institute that will be located at Tri-State Airport in Huntington. We are not quite as far along with that program as we are here in Charleston, but the A&P program remains clearly on our radar. We predict that the A&P program will produce hundreds of jobs for our region and provide a significant economic boost. And it will create a natural partnership and symbiotic relationship between Tri-State and Jaeger airports. The development of these programs is truly an investment in our beautiful mountain state. Aviation is going to pump a great deal of money into our economy, which will benefit us all. Truly diversi diversification of educational opportunities at Marshall, like aviation, pharmacy, and biomedical engineering, will draw students from across the country in our state. And that, my friends, is a good thing. I am now almost ready to introduce the governor of the great state of West Virginia. But before I do, I want to share with you some apropos words from Leonardo da Vinci. He said, when once you have tasted flight, you will forever walk the earth with your eyes turned skyward. For there you have been and there you will always long to return. We are proud that we are going to add to those who get to taste flight and long for the skies. We can't wait. All of us in West Virginia have been incredibly busy for the past four months. Our governor has been actively charting a flight path for our state during this pandemic, and he has done a remarkable job. I think we have stayed right on course, and I'm proud of where we are as a state in reducing the COVID-19 numbers, and we can thank our governor for that. In a close to home way, he has supported the institutions of higher learning in West Virginia by providing support and guidance that's allowing us to safely open for face-to-face -face and virtual classes this fall on our college campuses. We thank him for that as well. Governor Jim Justice knows firsthand the value of education in West Virginia. He was born in southern West Virginia and graduated from Woodrow Wilson High School. Shortly thereafter, he attended Marshall University in Huntington. He earned not only a bachelor's degree in business, but went on to get an MBA at Marshall. Being at Marshall proved very fortuitous for Jim Justice. While there, he was captain of the golf team for two years, and more importantly, it was at Marshall that he cemented his relationship with Kathy, who became his wife. Their daughter, Jill, also earned one of her degrees at Marshall. So Marshall is a family affair for the justices, and we are proud of that. Jim Justice has been an incredibly successful businessman in West Virginia with business interests in coal mining, agriculture, and the hospitality industry. We all know and love the Greenbrier. In May of 2015, Jim Justice announced his campaign for governor of West Virginia, and 19 months later, he was elected the 36th governor of the Mountain State. We are very pleased to have our governor here with us today. I now give you the 36th governor of the Mountain State, the Honorable Jim Justice. Well, Dr. Gilbert did a great job. He acknowledged almost everybody here from the standpoint of not missing a name. I'm not going to do that because I'll miss names, but absolutely, I, I just want to just say this to our senators, to our mayors, to our commissioners, to all those that, that make the wheels turn at Jaeger, to everyone that's here, the first thing that I would say to all of you is just this. I see you in your mask. You see me in my mask. We all know the times that we've been through for the last few months, and we all cling to a dream that we hope and pray that this will pass. 
Everyone is pulling the rope in West Virginia together. Absolutely, we're trying with all in us to make this terrible killer go away. Now, Kent just told me, he said, he said, he told this plane to really crank up when I'm up here talking. <laughs> so I'll talk real loud and I'll talk real quick because I've got to go. I have a meeting with the Department of Ed. We have a genuine real life crisis that we've got to figure out how to put our kids back in school, how to ha offer the virtual part and, and everything that goes with it. But I can never, never congratulate Marshall enough. I was, when I was at Marshall, believe it or not, I was skinny and I had brown hair. In some way, somehow, I found Kathy and we have two beautiful kids and two beautiful grandkids now. And it's absolutely been a marriage with Marshall that I'll, I'll, I'll love forever and ever. Now with that, I thank Bill No from the standpoint of, of being a great swimmer, his commitment to aviation. And if you just think, okay, Kent, now you did this on purpose, I know. <laughs> I love it though. Now let me just say one last thing. You know, there was a minister one time, pastor in a church, and he's preaching. And in the background, there's a couple of little babies and a little kid, and they're making noise. And you know what he said? He said, thank God for that noise. Thank God for this noise. Thank God for the activity right here at Yeager. Now again, there's no point in going back through the same things, but just think of the employment, think of the attraction to West Virginia that this is going to bring. I congratulate Marshall, I congratulate all of you, I congratulate all of you that have done great work here. You know, like I said, our senators, our mayors, our congresspeople, you know, our commissioners, all that have gone into this. I love you with all my soul. Let's keep doing all the great work we can possibly do and keep this ball moving forward. It's a great day, a great, great, great day. And so West Virginia just keep pouring it on. I'm gonna go do some other work. God bless all of you.